segment of the Key Training Center's Telethon, I want you to introduce to an old friend of mine, somebody I've known for a long time, and uh, he has a daughter who is here at the Key Training Center. This is Herb Gerald. Herb, we're glad to have you on the uh, Telethon this year. Thank you. I wouldn't miss it. Well, we go back a number of years, back to when I was in radio. We won't talk about how long ago that was. But um, your daughter, Milana, is a resident here at the Key mm -hmm. Training Center, somebody who enjoys very much the, uh, the activities and the benefits that the Key Training Center oh, offers. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about her history and, sure. and tell me about her. Well, uh, I was in the Air Force at the time. We had to accept the fact that she was different. Right. Uh, we started her in kindergarten thinking everything would be all right. We hadn't noticed anything different about her at all. But after a few weeks, the kindergarten teachers told us she wasn't keeping up, but not to worry. It was nothing unusual. Perhaps uh, maybe we could enter her again next year and things might be better, you know, that some children were slower than others. But we uh, entered, insisted on entering her into the first grade. But there again, after a couple of weeks, they called us and told us she simply wasn't keeping up. She wasn't uh, uh, keeping pace with the other students. Right. And that we'd have to find another place for her. That uh, perhaps we should have her tested. Well, this was a very small little base I was stationed on. And England, and they didn't have any uh, neurologists or psychologists or anything like that to make such uh, invest, uh, such uh, examinations. So they sent her to Radcliffe Infirmary in Oxford. I later learned was one of the world's uh, leading neurological clinics. And after several days of testing, they called me in and sat me down before a panel of neurologists and psychologists and what have you, and had to uh, tell me that she was different. They didn't know why or what caused it or anything, but she was what they determined minimally brain damaged. And they suggested that perhaps it was caused by one of her childhood diseases where fever is a factor, you know. And we do recall she had a terrible time with measles, and they suspect that perhaps the uh, measles caused her temperature to rise to the point where it affected her neurological system. I guess they could see the shock on my face at the time. Uh, they had uh, gentleman on the panel says, well, Mr. Carroll, if it's any consolation, he says, I'd like to remind you that your daughter, we have an awful lot to learn from people like your daughter. I looked at him kind of quizzically, and he, he says, well, I'll give you an example. She loves everybody, shouldn't we? Right. And I said, certainly. <laughs> he says, uh, she'll never be mad at you. If she is, a smile and all is forgotten and forgiven. Shouldn't we be that way? I said, absolutely. He says, thirdly, who's to say that she's not normal? And we have the problem. No one's been able to accurately define normalcy yet. You know, <laughs> he's true. at a point. So <laughs> I've thought of that a lot. But we had to accept it, and uh, we've tried to make the best of it. And thank God in the Key Training Center, things are working out beautifully. Now, how old is uh, Milana today? 52. She'll be, 52. She'll be 53 and next week. Great. A couple of weeks. Well, now, uh, tell me a little bit of history on how you came about founding the Key Training Center and oh, how it's Milana unbelievable. came to, to be a resident here. You've heard the expression, divinely led? Yes. We were divinely led, no question about it. Uh, I accepted a promotion. At the time, I was working with the Florida Marine Patrol, law enforcement, and I was uh, offered a promotion in this area, but we didn't know if there was anything for Milana up here. We kind of doubted it being a smaller county than the one we were in, Pinellas County. I worked out of Clearwater. 
But we decided one Sunday we'd drive up here and waste some gas and convince ourselves there was nothing for her. You know, we'd never heard of the Key Training Center. Right. And we began to ask questions around. Nobody had ever heard of anything. And all of a sudden, I stopped at the gas station on 44 and asked uh, if there was a facility for mentally handicapped, mentally challenged uh, students. He said, yes, there's a place called the Key Training Center right down the road. <laughs> so I turned around, came back, drove back and found a, at, I learned later, was a group home. There was a lady stepped out as I drove by and I stopped and I asked her if this was part of the Key Training Center. She told me, yes, this was a group home. I told her why I was here looking around and I asked her if there was a, do, do you think there might be a chance that my daughter might be, might become enrolled? She says, sure. Is there a waiting list? How long do you think it would take? Probably tomorrow you could get her in. <laughs> All at that time. And we did. Short, very short waiting came list. Up, I accepted the promotion. We came up, got her right in, and that was 25 years ago, or maybe 26. Everything's been running great ever since. Tell me a little bit about what the Key Training Center means for Milana. Well, Dennis, she loves it. Uh, it means an awful lot to her. It's her home now. It's the only thing she's really known, especially this group home business. She's been in the group home now for two years, and she loves it dearly. But she tells everybody, I love the group home, but I miss my mom and dad. <laughs> she wants, a, wants it both ways. Right. But she loves the activity at the key and the people. And as the uh, neurologist told me at, in Oxford, England, she loves everybody. A smile and you've made a friend for life. And they're all so kind and good to her here. She just, she just loves every minute of it. This is one of the things that we uh, like to tell folks in our audience is so often that uh, the residents of the Key Training Center, once you get to meet them and know them, the unconditional love that they share with you is Absolutely. just unbelievable. Absolutely. I like to tease them. I sometimes drop in on Milana unexpected at her workstation. I always ask the uh, instructor if I can heckle them a bit, I call it, you know. <laughs> they love it. Absolutely love it, you know. And I'll walk in and, hey, you bums, get busy. And, oh, they turn around, here comes trouble, you know, here's trouble. You know, they love every, bit, every minute of it. Here's Mr. Gerald to have fun with us. Today, oh, yeah, right? yeah. Here comes trouble. <laughs> they call me trouble. <laughs> well, now, for you as a parent, what has the Key Training Center meant to you? Security, knowing that Milana will be taken care of when we're gone, knowing that she will love it, Many things, like the little memorial garden out behind the cafeteria. Beautiful place for the ashes to rest, I think, for God's angels. <laughs> Beautiful place. Uh, the wife and I are both are just thrilled to death knowing that uh, her future is in good hands. That it's secure. Secure. Very good. The very best of care. I don't think uh, Chet Cole and his staff would allow anything unkind or unhealthy to happen to his clients. He loves them as well as all of us, I'm sure. It shows. And yeah. uh, again, for their future, as well as your security of mind right now, it's an important thing that the Key Training Center continues its, its mm. work that it goes Absolutely, on. Absolutely. Right yeah. Okay. And they are doing so in a big way. What would you say to the folks in our audience today to encourage them to get involved either with a financial contribution or by becoming a volunteer even to the Key Training Center? What would you tell them? The wonderful future and friendship that you'd make along the way. You would meet friends and volunteers and clients that would enrich your life in ways that you wouldn't believe. And uh, the clients, uh, as I said earlier, they love everyone and they need anyone's attention that will share a little bit of their life with them. 
they learn from it and it means so much to them and you will both reap fantastic dividends the clients as well as the volunteer the person that uh, will volunteer a little time very good herb thanks for joining me today likewise and all of us in the audience and thanks for sharing milana's story with us it's oh. just one of the many stories oh i love that, telling it that uh, shows the the love the kindness the dignity and respect <clears throat> that goes on here at the key training center <clears throat> well let's go back once again and join our other host here at the telethon